Welcome back to the third and final part of my DX Commander Signature 9 build series. So finally we had a break in the weather and I was able to get outside to finish the build. Now using a couple of clothes dryers to support the pole at waist height made things so much easier. Install in the driven plate by sliding it over the pole and push down as far as you can. I then used a hose clamp with some clear tubing to secure the driven plate in place. Now this is all supplied in the kit provided. Now at this point it's worth sliding over the element spreaders all the way down to the bottom. Now the smaller one goes at the top and the larger one at the bottom. They will all get to a point where they cannot go down any further due to the size of the hole. Next step is to install the nylon hose clamps as part of the stay up kit. Now these clamp up most sections to keep the telescopic pole from collapsing. These are also used to keep some of the spreaders in place. Next I will attach the main elements to the driven plate. Now I followed Callum's diagram in the manual which shows where each of the different band elements must go. I guess this is important due to Callum's previous testing of how each element interacts with each other. After all this is a multiband vertical antenna with an element for each band. Now these fit on very easy. Just slide the fork connector under the washer and then tighten the wing nut. So now it's time to pull the elements through the spreaders. The elements are different lengths and for the shorter ones we'll use shock cord between the top of the element and the spreader plate above it. This keeps the element nice and tight and allows for movement in the wind. Now as we prepared earlier the elements with a small fold back, those fold back loops will also be used to place a stopper knot through it. Now I make the stopper knots by wrapping the cord around my finger in a cross and then looping again with putting the end through the middle. For me this seems to work pretty well and creates just a large enough knot to stop the shock cord going through the hole on the spreader. Once you've made a stopper knot on one end you can cut the shock cord to length and create another stopper knot for the element end. Then poke it through the fold back loop. The 40 meter element on the signature line doesn't have a fold back loop but instead it does go right to the top of the pole, through the eyelet and then down the exact opposite side of the pole. Now this is important for linear loading. Now I use some of the supplied electrical tape to keep this in place. Now just below the top spreader I used a piece of shock cord to create a tensioner for the 40 meter element. With one end through the top spreader and the other end just taped to the 40 meter element. Now this keeps the 40 meter element taut up to this point and prevents any sag with wind movement. As we go down the pole just make sure all of the stopper knots are holding correctly. The last thing we want is for one of these to slip out once the antenna is up in the air. Although putting the signal to line up and taking down is extremely easy due to the slide over ground mount and a single connection from the SO239 to the driven plate. Now I'll show you that shortly. The last thing to do just before you slide the pole over the ground mount is to remove the bottom end cap. Now this simply unscrews. Oh and don't forget to slide over the ground radial plate before installing the main antenna. Carefully pick up the pole, line up the base with the ground mount and then gently guide it down to sit in its natural position. You can now go ahead and attach the center connection from the SO239 to the driven plate using the last empty wing nut mounting point. You can now step back, marvel at the monster of the antenna that is before your eyes. Once you're happy you can then go ahead and lay out all of your ground radials that we prepared earlier. How you install the ground radials is entirely up to you and depends on what's available. Ideally a 360 radio field would be beneficial but for my test I'll be creating a radio field in a kind of semi-circle fashion. So if you wanted to install the antenna up against the fence for example then this would also work as well as having it mounted in the middle of your garden with a 360 degree radial field. For permanent radio install you can use biodegradable lawn pins to hold the radials in place. Or you can just leave them as they are and over time the grass will naturally pull them down to the earth. Last step for my install is to attach the coax that goes from my shack to the SO239 connection on the ground plate. 
For permanent installs, you can use things like Vaseline or self-amalgamating tape to keep the connection watertight. So now it's time to head into the shack and connect up my vector network analyzer to the other end of the coax to check the SWR on each of the bands. So first I'll perform a sweep from one megs up to 30 megahertz. And this is exactly what we want to see. We have all the dips in more or less of the right place for each band. Now this shows the antenna is working how we want it to and nothing has majorly gone wrong. So let's drill down a little closer into the 40 meter band. So from seven megs up to 7.2 megahertz, we see an average of around 1.2 SWR across the whole band. Now that's awesome because it means I don't need to make any adjustments. The 30 meter band does look like it needs some adjustment to bring the lowest dip up in frequency. This shows the element is slightly too long. Now I personally don't use 30 meters, but if I did, I could either take the antenna down and shorten the 30 meter element or adjusting the fold back, or I could just use the ATU in my radio. 20 meter band also looks great with the SWR creeping up towards the CW portion of the band. Again, I could take it down and adjust if I wanted to. 70 meters looks flat as a pancake, so another band that requires no adjustment. Now the 15 meter band does look rather high, but remember this comes from the 40 meter element. So if you want to use 15 meters, then I could either use an ATU or make adjustments to the 40 meter band element to bring this down. Now Callum from DX Commander has some interesting videos on this topic and how to adjust the antenna. Now 12 meters looks great too, with the dip favoring the bottom of the band. So again, if you wanted to fine tune this band, you could shorten the 12 millimeter element slightly to raise the dip up to the middle of the band. And lastly, 10 meters. With an SWR of lower than 1.5 across the whole band, and that's 28 to 29.5 megahertz. So a nice broadband element for that band. So now let's hook up the radio and have a listen around the bands to see what we can hear. Or should I say, hear what I can hear. Unfortunately though, band conditions are really bad today. But let's see if we can make at least one contact. So we're quite a bit higher than that. A G zero CMK and two Mike Mike. Very, very nice day. Beautiful day and good food. I was working today. I just finished working. So uh, local time here, just after uh, 1700 local here. And we have a temperature of uh, 31 degrees. Over. Uh, big signal as usual. Uh, you sound great. I'm just running the other rig. I'm not running the SDR. I'm running my ICOM 7300. That's a good radio. I'm just playing with it. Yeah, 31 degrees right now. 31, 31 Celsius. Very, very warm. I was working outside. I'm really, really, uh, really tired. So I had a good day work. Here we go. All the best. Say hi to you guys. Way on. Muchas gracias, uh, Miguel. Uh, hasta pronto. K8NY. Okay, You're 5 and 9, 5 and 9. Not QRP for sure. Nice to hear you. Good audio. QSL? QRZ, Victor Echo Niner, Florida, India. All American DX, United, Yokohama to Victoria, Madrid. Mike Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. Uh, Mexico Zero, Delta, Quebec, Whiskey. You're welcome. You're 5 9 plus 20. 5 9 plus 20, like local station. My name is Victor, Victor Itarichari, Tokyo, Ontario Radio. I am operating near Fuman, United, Mexico, America, Norway. I am from Village. Uh, Mike uh, Zero, Delta, Quebec, Village, good? Yeah, thank you very much, Victor. Nice to meet you this afternoon. Okay, the name here is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango. Uh, the name is Matt, Mike Alpha Tango. Uh, you report 5, 9, plus 10, peaking plus 20. Very, very strong into the UK this afternoon. It's uh, very nice to meet you for the first time. Weather here, sunny, 12 degrees Celsius. First time in about a week that we've had some sun. Anyway, microphone back to you from M0 DQW. Roger, Roger. Thank you very much, uh, Matthew, for the nice contact with you. 
anti-double X information uh, in Ukraine. <clears throat> we have a cyclone every day rainy, every day rainy. Uh, temperature not so high. Uh, I can see in my digital uh, thermometer uh, 12 degrees centigrees, uh, one two degrees centigrees, but uh, a little bit rainy with wind, not so like it is springtime. Uh, okay, 73 to you. Have a nice Sunday. All the very best from Ukraine. And the uh, microphone back to you, Matt. Yeah, thank you very much, Victor. Much appreciated. Well, you make sure you stay safe and uh, hopefully we'll catch you again another time. 73s from the UK, M0 DQW. Bye-bye. Uh, bye-bye, my friend. Stay safe and uh, see you again. Uh, QZ North America, Central America, Caribbean, United, Yokohama to Victor Mike. Well, there we go, guys. I hope you enjoyed this three-part series on building the DX Commander Signature 9. It's a very well-built and engineered antenna, and it's designed to perfection. Performance is also top-notch with that low angle for those far DX contacts. Now check out the DX Commander YouTube channel or website for further information. Until the next video, stay safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>